Warburg is probably one of the most overlooked biochemists of the last century, but that may be about to change. Otto Warburg was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1931 for physiology or medicine for his discovery of the nature and mode of action of the respiratory enzyme. This related to how cells use anaerobic or aerobic respiration for energy, or as he described it, respiration and fermentation. Now, most of his research focuses on how the chemical processes in both plant and animal cells use sugar for energy and the role of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the process. One discovery was that cancerous cells could grow and develop even in the absence of oxygen. A significant paper was the metabolism of tumours in the body. And this was published in 1926, where he proposed that tumour cells in living animals could be killed through the lack of energy. He noted that cancer cells could use either respiration or fermentation as a means of using energy. So he wanted to kill off the cancer cells and need to prevent both these processes from taking place. He conducted tests denying the cells both oxygen and sugar and then later restoring both the oxygen and sugar. If the cells were denied both sugar and oxygen for four hours, they'd not be able to recover when both the sugar and oxygen were resupplied. However, because both cancerous cells and normal cells require energy to live, and since the cancerous cells are actually more flexible at using anaerobic respiration than normal cells, this method of killing cancer cells would also kill off all the healthy cells at the same time. Additionally, this added flexibility should also mean that if you withdrew either the oxygen or the sugar, again the healthy cells would die at the same time as the cancer cells, or even probably quicker than the cancer cells. However, upon testing, he found that cancer cells took at least five times as much glucose out of the blood supply as did normal healthy cells. His theory was that healthy cells use aerobic respiration to produce their energy and produce carbon dioxide and no lactic acid and only use anaerobic respiration when the oxygen supply is drastically re reduced. When he tested cancer cells, he found that they use anaerobic respiration for about two thirds of the respiration and aerobic respiration for the rest. Judging purely on that by the amount of lactic acid that was produced. So whilst cutting off the oxygen supply to cells was more lethal to healthy cells than cancer cells, cutting off the sugar or the glucose supply to cells was actually more lethal to cancer cells than was to their healthy cells. So Otto Werberg had a problem. How to deprive cancer cells of sugars which are normally being pumped around the body by the blood supply? Curiously, his way around the problem was to deny the area around the cancer cells oxygen. This would kill off the healthy cells in the blood vessels, and as a result, the cancer cells would lack the blood supply and therefore lack the sugars required to live. This approach of using the cell's metabolism to treat cancer wasn't actually adopted. Instead, the focus was placed more upon enzymes that were actually being produced by cancer cells. However, his research hasn't been totally forgotten. Now, Otto Warburg thought that cancerous cells' reliance upon anaerobic respiration would be the result of the cells actually being defective. Instead, it appears that cancer cells have a protein which normally regulates consumption of sugars switched off permanently. So cancer cells consume a great deal of energy and hence can rapidly grow as they do so. It's almost as if the cancer cells are actually addicted to eating. And this presents both a problem and an opportunity that you need to cut off all forms of potential energy to the cancer cells, not just glucose, but glutamine, maybe fatty acids and other sources as well. However, there's already a condition which does directly affect the energy supplies in the blood, like diabetes. Now, in type 2 diabetes, metformin is used to stop the liver from producing new glucose and also increasing glucose absorption into the muscles. We notice that diabetics taking metformin are less likely to develop or even die from cancer. So currently we really don't know enough about the metabolism of cancer cells and how we might actually go about controlling and manipulating it. However, this area of research has a great deal of potential, especially if it can disrupt the progression of cancer tumours while at the same time leaving the rest of the body relatively healthy. Potential for new cancer treatments, maybe? Otto Warburg would be happy about that.